Okay, so instead of, of focusing on uh, what normal interviews do, I'm gonna well do an interview based on the, your experience touring with the band. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, uh, what can you remember of your first tour with Milan Cohen? Oh, not much. Um, in the beginning, we did like weekends in yeah. Sweden, a lot. We played several hundred gig gigs right. a year. But uh, one of the first tours outside of Sweden, we went to to Germany, Belgium, Netherlands, I think, with the supporting Pennywise. Yeah, that was huge for us because right. Pennywise they were big by the time. Yeah, yeah, they have always been one of our favorite bands. So yeah, it's it was really really big thing for us. It was kind of chaotic tour, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of a lot of drinking, a lot of partying, like. Some bands do when they when they start. Yeah. And then you calm down a bit when you get older, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so is there many differences from the first tours you made to the latest tours that you are doing now? Not really. Uh, maybe we uh, we try to to explore every city as much as possible back then. Now we have been to a lot of those cities we play, and then we know our favorites, so we try to. In those areas, we, we try to do something yeah. fun or, or hang out with friends or, or whatever. But when it comes to the actual live show, right. we're more more focused these days. Uh, we didn't we didn't know anything when we started. <laughs> we just went with the flow and, and and to see what happens and, and you know you didn't you didn't know that you needed to bring your own symbols or kick pedal or, or yeah. sound guy or tour manager yeah. or whatever and you didn't in the beginning but, but then after a while we we learn along the way I guess right so you know it's not your first time in Spain and it's not your first time in Europe as well so uh, nowadays do you have chance to to meet the cities to see some of the cities that you are playing or yeah. is it still like other first tours yeah, we, to... we do actually uh, not much time though, because yeah. we're traveling on a, on a tour bus with beds in there. So, say today, for example, we we went here to a garage yeah. outside of the just like 15 minutes walk here from here. Right. And the bus, yeah, the bus will stay there for for the whole night. And, right. And uh, we couldn't really go to the club and unload all the stuff because we can't go there before three o'clock. Yeah. Uh, so we woke up, but. Sadly, today we all felt sick, so we need to go to rest here. All right. Uh, but the, I mean, we have half a day in every city. <laughs> so we arrive in the morning and then yeah, and then we do something, go eat and, and sound check, and and then we play the show, and then we go on the bus, <laughs> have a couple of beers, and then go yeah. to bed and wake up in the next city. So it's the 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 biggest and the best part of the day is is being on stage. Yeah. The actual show. Right. Uh, sometimes you try to kill time <laughs> as much as possible when you're situated in, in like, say, for example, an like industrial area. Yeah. Where you can't do anything. Exactly. It's hard to get from there to to a city or far away from a city. Yeah. So. But uh, I would never complain. It's it's the best. I love it. Right. So from your experience touring with the band, uh, which cities are the best in Europe to play? For for many reasons, maybe the city itself, the crowd, uh, the venues, yeah. or yeah, we toured so many times uh, through Europe. So so I mean, every city have have something that that's that I love, and all the big cities we played so many times. So we have a pretty good following. So I mean, Madrid, Barcelona, and Paris or Berlin, yeah, they're all good for us. And, it it and happens to you that as you play a lot and you've been playing for a lot of years now, you know the stages, you know how it works, everything. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, there are lots of times you come back to the same venue. Yeah. You, maybe you don't rem remember the name, but you might have. You, you, I've been there. Before. Yeah. <laughs> I've been here. I've been here. Uh, but it, like on this tour, it's really fun to to do the shows in, in the UK because. Was so long time ago we went there. Yeah. And we didn't have any clue what to expect. Right. It was really, really good. 
and it's been really good through the whole tour. It's uh, yeah, except for Tilburg, I think every show is, and maybe Manchester, but every show has been sold out except for these, those two. Yeah, oh, that's so, great. Yeah, it's good to hear. It's Let's good see to be here. Tonight, it's a beautiful day seen. today. Yeah. So I really wanted to go out, but I didn't have the energy. <laughs> so. Uh, it was easier for you to choose a set list when you started because you only have those songs yeah. or it's easier for you now because you have so many albums that you can just choose the best songs on each album? We, uh, I mean, we have to, we have to promote our new album, yeah, of course, true. Play, yeah. play some songs from there. And we have to listen to the audience a bit too, what they like. Yeah. And then we try to switch some songs over and, and add some songs we didn't play in a long time except i mean on top of of the new songs and the, the favorites yeah so but we're lucky we have, we have so many, <laughs> so songs many to, yeah. to pick from so it's a good it's a, it's a nice problem yeah yeah so uh, have you ever thought of doing again something like uh, when an album gets its 20 anniversary or something like that playing the whole album on a tour or it doesn't cross your mind and we did that with Pedalbridge Pioneers. Yeah. Uh, it was a fun thing to do. Would you do it again? I, I won't say never. I won't say never. But, but we haven't talked about anything like that. So yeah. It's... I don't know. It's We want to focus on, on this album now and, and see what happens later. Yeah. And hopefully we can start to write a new album pretty soon instead of going on tour. Celebrating yeah. like a 20-year-old. Um, <laughs> it's it's I think we have a flow in the band we, we people seem to really like the, the true brew album so mm. my hopes are that we try start to write the new album rather than, than go on to thinking it. of an anniversary or something yeah, like that yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, when people see the band, they always see the positive things like, oh, these guys are having a hell of a time yeah. or everything. But tell me, what is uh, the worst part of being on a tour? There are no bad parts, really. It's, it's, I mean, I have family and my kids, as you saw, yeah. back home. And that's, that's the hard part, to be away from them. But, but then again, we, we've been doing this all my whole life, pretty much. Yeah. So... I'm used to it, my wife is used to it, and, and my kids are not used to it. <laughs> they, they get sad sometimes. But we're not doing these like six, eight week tours like we did before. Yeah. We try to keep it, compress it to, to like 13, 14 shows. Yeah. And then go back home for two, three weeks and then go out again and do no days off really. Yeah. Just, just play and do it. Do what we're supposed to do right. on tour. <laughs> <laughs> so as you say, you have family, you have the kids. Yeah. So uh, you're a musician. You know how hard it is to be a musician or to go to yeah. be in this kind of industry. Uh, if your kid tomorrow says that he wants to or she wants to be a musician, will you support that or will of you try course. to convince yeah. to do another thing? No, no, no. I mean, that's my parents never. They always supported me. Yeah. And they didn't know what, what it meant to be a musician or, or what you would see on tour or what if you would see drugs or alcohol or whatever. You get, I mean, you get exposed to those things everywhere nowadays. Yeah. And, and that's that's the scary part. But, but I mean, you got to support. I have, I have to support what my kids want to try and yeah. want to do. And uh, I, I got the opportunity to try stuff and, and fail rather than not not do it and it. regret yeah 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 and that's that's how you learn life <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a bit about true brew the new album you know yeah. uh, uh, uh luckily it was a very fun album for fans uh, they were alone to hear this album and they have it close to their classics like uh for monkeys or latin plate what do you think is that why that didn't happen on the previous album we did uh, when we wrote the Machine 15 album and the Kingwood album. We felt we wanted to go in that direction, and, and, and when we went with Machine 15, we went so far in that direction with with the uh, rock or big production or, or whatever that we felt we want to do the complete opposite. We want to do like a 
more more simple album yeah more direct album and where you could really feel our roots yeah and uh, without it being like trying to do another life and play because we yeah. don't want to do that we, we yeah. want to do something new so so uh, but i think the turned out as as we wanted a lot because we wanted a modern production but you know with the old Berlinian feeling to it yeah and uh, I, I think I think it went good and, and people seem to like the album a lot it's I mean it's not often you hear people during or before a tour yeah screaming for that they want to hear new, new songs, songs. <laughs> yeah <laughs> they always hey play 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 bullion play Mr. Clean blah blah yeah we love to play those songs but but it's not very usual that, that they, <laughs> they ask for the new songs and that's make them it makes me super happy yeah that was my next question because you know people always ask for the classics on the show yeah so which is the song you are most tired of playing live that you play <laughs> a thousand times and of course you like it because it's your song and yeah, it's a famous it's song but you are a bit tired of playing <laughs> uh, let's see to be honest maybe Penguins of Polar Bears yeah one of those songs played a million times and, and I mean <laughs> uh, but it's a great song and I understand why people want to hear it and and uh, that the other guys want to have it in the set too uh, so I mean it, it's not a problem it's like like I said it's a it's it's a nice problem to have <laughs> so many right big problem. so as you say before on the two previous albums you try another direction and now you come back to what you know people like and you like um, Maybe it's just soon to ask because the album was released just March last year. But if you have to write a new album now, do you think that it will uh, follow the direction of True Brew or they will, you will try to do something different again? I don't know, but that, that's probably, we, I guess that's where we start from, from those, from the knowledge of, of or maybe, <laughs> I don't know, I can't, I can't really speak for, for Nicola and Matthias because they're the ones writing most of the yeah all of the all of the material but i know they they are really proud of the true brew songs yeah the whole album so i think they would start somewhere where true brew is and take it somewhere maybe nearby maybe far yeah away. i don't know <laughs> but it's hard to say we haven't started to to write anything yet so. right okay well just to finish the interview um you know the the video clip from bring me home he shows the mascot of the band yeah. uh, feeling a bit misplaced in all the scenes yeah, that he yeah, goes yeah. and everything. Have you ever felt that way, being a band on the punk scene? Uh, not in the punk scene. Yeah, maybe, maybe, I mean, people doesn't see us being as punk as like the, the underground bands yeah. or whatever. They see us like a big band or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> commercial band but but I mean did you ever have a backlash because of that or no no not really and we don't care about that but but we we still do everything like we did when we started the band we, yeah we take care of everything ourselves and, and we're really independent and DIY. It's still DIY yeah yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely uh, but misplaced you I mean you can feel misplaced in life you can I mean being a musician and then yeah and then you come back home and you have your family there and sometimes it, I mean to me it sometimes feel like I mean a bike again or something <laughs> <laughs> so, some outlaw stuff because yeah. we don't live we live kind of different lives than yeah. our neighbor right the house there. but uh, well, it's a little job at the end it's a little job What's that? At the end, it's still a job. Yeah, what yeah, you're yeah, doing, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. If we're going to be able to to tour a lot and do this, we need to yeah. we need to to be out. Exactly. Lot. So yeah. it's uh, I wouldn't I would never complain. And uh, this is what I love to do. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we could keep on playing as long as we have fun and, and make good songs. So do you see yourself playing drums for Millen Colin for the the next 15 years? Maybe not 15 years. Maybe <laughs> five years. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. We never. We, you could never answer that question. We got the, that question 
do you see yourself in, being in the band in five years? And that's yeah. That's a question we got back when we released the first album too. So, um, friends around us, they told us, um, I give this band two years, mostly. Yes, <laughs> and you're still so here. Up, they fight so much. Yeah. But, I mean, we're close friends and we have arguments and... and it's like a family. Like that, yeah. But All uh, the I families mean, fight so and, yeah. you know. Almost like brothers in a way. Yeah. But we live in separate places. I mean, Nicola lives in Gothenburg, I live in Malmö, and the other yeah. guys live in other